Are you thinking of owning rental property? Whether it's building a house or buying one to turn it into rental property. What if you are? Watch this because girl, I got the tea on what to expect in the business and it ain't all pretty. Well, the first reality about rental property ownership is that you might have extended periods of time without a tenant. Right now, I'm at over a month without a tenant and I'm like, oh, what? I did not expect this because I just thought once there's a house, there should be someone who's wanting that house. I just thought, you know, there's a market like ready for, for, for accommodations. I just, it doesn't really make sense to me why there's no tenant right now, but I'm realizing that it's a reality that I need to, um, you know, just adjust my mind and expectations to. So the thing with this is that the problem with having no tenant is that for obvious reasons, if you're dependent on the income to pay off your mortgage and loan, that means it's going to be a problem because now you're going to be without those funds, right? That's the obvious one. And then the other one is security issues. Like if your house stays so long without anybody staying inside, it's vulnerable to attack and break ins and all of that. And yes, people do steal even in empty houses. Like, I've heard people actually can risk their lives and steal wiring. Can you imagine wiring in a in a live like apparently when when once it's wired it's like it goes live and it can choke you and stuff like that but I don't know like who does that? And then the other thing is when a house is not being occupied for a, a certain period of time it gets to get worn out really quickly. In Susana we say Nduya or in Nalitot. So you know when somebody stays in a house they tend to clean the house and maintain it in some way or other. So if nobody's staying inside it means the dirt gets to build up. You can even get termites in there and just like the house just you know gets worn out quickly. So if there's somebody inside it's a really perfect kind of situation. And then the other thing is like if there's a if you have a big yard like I do you know you get a lot of weeds growing and it gets overgrown and then it, it gets so costly to remove all of that right now the person that i asked to do that job is charging me over 600 like when i combine everything it's over 600 bula to get it off the yard so that's a lot of money if there was a tenant the whole time that means it would have meant that the tenant is taking care of the yard and there wouldn't be so much growth of weeds and grass right the other sad reality is every time a tenant leaves, you are going to spend money. Granted, you are going to spend money because with the house, there's normal wear and tear and there's damage that could be caused by the tenant. So it's almost unavoidable to spend money. I just wish that there was a way a tenant could just leave and then you know, the next tenant comes in without having to spend money. It's such an inconvenience. Now, the, the one thing, about that is that there's a security deposit that is paid to you as the landlord by the tenant when they first occupy the house but the thing with the security deposit is we chow it we eat it all we eat it so it means when they pay the security deposit you'll be like ah i want to spend it because the money is sweet oh so you spend it and then you're like ah i'll see them when they leave you hope it's gonna be years from now right uh, i'll have money then you know and then jiki jiki like Ling ling, like soon soon, like giddy giddy, you know. They they say they're leaving, and then um, it's like crickets now. You have to like find a way to pay back the security deposit, right? So in the incidents that you don't pay them back the security deposit because they have done some damage to the house, you still have to use that same money anyways to fix, right? So you do need the money. You do have to find a way to get that money, and then over and above the security deposit there's likely to be other things you need to fix so at the end of the day you're going to have to spend the money equivalent to the security deposit and then plus plus that so that's a lot of money to take out of your salary for example it's a lot of money like it's such an inco i think for me that's just like ah oh, mm, mm, you know like nobody told me about this like nobody warned me you know so yeah unfortunately that so you heard me talk about normal wear and tear um, versus damage by the tenant. So let's get into that. What is normal wear and tear? So I did a bit of research on this and it looks like there are some things that, that have been deemed as normal wear and tear versus damage by the tenant. 
and it is said that this is the, the one of the trickiest parts of things to navigate when it comes to tenant landlord relationships and also when it comes to the contract or lease agreement right because these are things that can cause a lot of conflict because what may be normal normal way and tear to the tenant may be damage you know in my eyes as a landlord for example take this toilet seat for example right um this toilet seat when my tenant got in in about a month or less they reported and said it was loose and i'm there thinking but how how is it loose after just a month of occupation so to me i felt they damaged it but to them they felt well we just got here and it's damaged already so it's, it's, it's your problem as the landlord like that's maintenance issues for you as a landlord so at the time when he reported this I just felt okay I guess I should fix it because I felt you know I guess I mean they've just gotten in it it wouldn't be fair to impose that cost on them it was just like such a, a really tricky thing for me to navigate but I just accepted the cost and so I was like, okay, I don't know. I mean, even now I'm still trying to, you know, research about that because like I said, it's a tricky, tricky thing to navigate. Um, and then the other example is this uh, curtain rail here. You see, and I, I love you. I love you, my tenant, but yeah. Okay. Um, so the curtain rail came off when I got into the house to inspect when the tenant was leaving. And it was, it came off and he said something like, um, like when I first saw that, the first thing that came to my mind was somebody must have pulled it down okay, because they had a toddler. I, I love you, my tenant. Okay, they had a toddler, and um, and I just felt like they must have pulled it down or something, you know, or some accident happened. But he, the tenant, insists that it, it's because I put in uh, material that, that is not durable, you? like plastic, like screws, you know, and it, it was just too heavy. Like the curtains were just too heavy for that kind of. Um, material and that's why the curtain reel came down and I'm like tricky like I said tricky so for me I just felt like it's just this point of conflict I'm just like I don't know man I don't know I don't know I don't know what do you think about that um, and you know for me I just felt it was so eye-opening like I, I, I love the fact that I'm learning about this it's just yeah you know hey but it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking just to see your house falling to pieces so i've gotten advice from a couple of videos that i've watched about this like you need to have a discussion with your tenant about what is deemed normal wear and tear and what is deemed damage by him so that by the end of the of the of the stay these minimal conflict it's also important to take pictures before and after occupation so that you are all able to see what what the house looked like before occupation it's so 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 important and um have a checklist you know and check every little thing check everything all the screws everything so that there's minimal conflict and i think it's also important to educate yourself on what normal wear and tear is because that will help you to expand your list in the in the lease it has to be in the contract and um i feel like also it's it's also tricky again because you could be as thorough as you could be but then there could be something that's unforeseeable that happens and that still calls for discussion with your tenant to see whether it's something that will be counted to that cost or yours as a landlord now let's talk about the lease agreement or contract yeah i'm quickly learning that i i might have to adjust my lease first of all to include things like um the normal wear and tear thing and also to include things like debushing like removing the weeds in the yard you know my contract says that you shall keep the the premises in good order but then premises you know to somebody else it might mean the house itself but i understand premises as the house and the yard but then if you have never discussed it with your tenant in that way it might be something that they omit or overlook and then by the time they leave the house and they have not debushed or removed all the weeds and stuff you know it could be a, a very sticky situation they might feel like yeah we don't you didn't mention it and then yeah you might you know have a conflict about that so i'm just thinking just to be explicit like explicitly stated in the lease that you shall take care of the yard as well 
and it's something that it's something that you can think about whether you want to do it as a landlord or you want the tenant to be the one to do it but i remember actually when i used to stay in in government housing they used to they had this clause in the in the contract they said you shall make sure that your yard is clean or something like that so i used to never really get it i was like but it's my it's um it's my like what if i don't mind having weeds in my house so it, but it's not, it's not, it's not really your business. Like it's my business, but now I get it. The other reality that you must be prepared for is unpaid utilities. So you might have in the agreement that the tenant is supposed to pay for water and whatever, but then if they leave and they don't pay for this, you may have to foot the bill in as much as it might be in the contract. I mean, I'm still very new to this, so I'm not really sure what to do if like my tenant leaves or has left without paying for utilities you know now let's talk about the stove the stove guys the stove it's never a good idea to have a fitted stove for tenants i've learned this the hard way because um the state of the stove now is just it's heartbreaking to me considering the fact that the stove is really really it's fairly new i got this last april or so and like less than a year ago and now looking at it this um looking at it now i'm just i'm so heartbroken i don't even know what to do with myself you know um i just thought for the tenant but i just see that no it's it's really not a good idea because we have different ways of cleaning different ways of taking care of things other people do it so well other people don't and things like cockroach infestations are a problem if if you have cockroaches and you have a stove that that keeps running with different tenants it means that if one tenant had cockroaches, they're going to go on to the next tenant if you are not able to fumigate really well. Now the challenge with my situation is that it's inbuilt in the structure of the kitchen. So if I remove the stove, I have to literally change the structure of the kitchen. And I don't know how, how that will look like, but it's something that I need to consider because I just don't want cockroaches in the house carrying over to the next tenant. Yeah, that's just not my brand. All in all, what I can say is I have a new respect for rental property. Like it looks like rental property is not a breeze like I thought it would be. There's so much to learn, there's so much to, to do, and there's a lot of capital spent as well. You know, I just, I realize that with any business whatsoever, there are no businesses with no challenges. Every business has a challenge. And some may be easier than others, but there is no business without any challenges. Um, and I also get what God meant when he said, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat. We are sweating for sure, but we're also eating, but we are sweating. So everybody sweats at the end of the day. Everybody sweats in whatever profession they've chosen. So I hope this video was a conversation starter. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the challenges that we face as tenants and as landlords to kind of foster a, a good relationship and be able to understand things from each other's point of view. So let me know if this video has been helpful and it, if it has been helpful, please uh, do, the, do the necessary, do the, um, the liking, the liking, and then subscribe if you haven't already. All right, see you in the next video, bye.